Welcome back guys. In this video lecture, we'll be talking about a very interesting topic that's called protoplast fusion, right? Protoplast fusion, majorly here we'll be talking about in case of plant cells or plant biology. Protoplast fusion is also true for animal cells, but very less, majorly we focus on the plant cells and plant biology. Now, what is protoplast fusion? To understand that, you need to know first what is protoplast. The thing is, protoplast, do not confuse the term with chloroplast or leucoplast. Those are different things. Remember, the idea of a cell is that we have a cell membrane outside and we have a nucleus inside. This is the cell membrane. This is a eukaryotic cell, obviously. Remember, protoplast is possible in eukaryotes here. Cell membrane outside, nucleus inside, and rest of the molecules inside the cell. Rest of the organelles are inside. Now, remember, whatever thing is inside the cell is called the protoplasm, right? The actual cytoplasm with all the organelles and all these things are actually called together as a protoplasm. So, if we simply, so let us say this is a cell, this is a cell, if we just track cell membrane out of the cell, out of the picture. So, cell minus cell membrane equals to protoplast, cell minus cell membrane or cell wall majorly because if you talk about uh, in this case if we are talking about the plant cell we have this cell wall structures something like this for example so simply we can say cell minus here cell wall Whatever thing we left with is called as a protoplast. So, normally the plant cell should contain cell membrane and then cell membrane is surrounded by cell wall for much more rigidity. Now, if we just exclude that cell wall, we only left with some distracted cell membrane along with other components. That thing is called as protoplast for that plant, right? And protoplast fusion means once we have all those things, all those protoplast in our hand, we will fuse two such protoplast together or more than two. Generally, we use two protoplast to attach with one another, right? Obviously, without cell memory is kind of lame. So, obviously, it, it should be cell wall, right? So, once we drag the cell wall out from a complete cell of a plant, so this is a plant cell, remember, minus the cell wall equals to the protoplast. So, we have such protoplast in our hand, two of such protoplast can be fused with each other, right, using current, using voltage, right. So, you apply some voltage that is called electrofusion and two such protoplast can be joined with each other. We can also use some chemical mediators to join them instead of electricity. Now, why we do that? Why we fuse such protoplast? Now, the idea for this protoplast fusion is to genetically modify the type of plant that we are dealing with. And we usually use this for the development of plant breeds during agriculture. Okay, Different agricultural phases of plant breeding, we want to generate better quality hybrids, better quality plants like say disease resistant plant. Right? For example, there are certain disease called rolled out uh, leaf or leaf roll disease in case of potato. So, we take those such potatoes with the, without the disease, I mean the disease resistant plant with the disease containing plant, I mean disease vulnerable plant. So, we take such some of those disease resistant plant containing protoplast. So, the protoplast for disease resistant with without the feature of resistance, right. So, normal cell not getting the disease, but still this is taken from a cell which is not resistant type. And we make them fuse and we produce this hybrid. Now, usually after these processes, we know that the genes that are responsible for the disease resistance for this protoplast is now transferred to the other cell. So, ultimately the cell we get will contain all the genetic material of both DR and D type of protoplast. This is from plant 1. 
this is from plan 2 two different plans right the idea here is to fuse the genetic component together to fuse the nucleus of these two different plants together because remember when you are fusing the protoplast we are not only fusing the cell cell i mean we are not only fusing the cytoplasmic content inside there there shouldn't be two nucleus so nucleuses will also fuse with themselves right and two nucleus when find i mean fuse with themselves they will call a heterocaryon because hetero means separate or different so two different the source of nucleus are two different plants so the other nucleus the giant nucleus that they form will be called as heterocaryon right so the heterocaryon or giant nucleus is there now inside and that is a hybrid cell now this hybrid protoplast can then be matured into a plant and that plant will have that resistant disease resistant property and much better properties because let's say this plant has a better food so they can now produce a better quality food with the disease resistant property so it's a genetic experiment remember the thing we have to do earlier we have to do for a generations after generations now can be done in lab just a minute i mean in just one two or three days i mean for this process to occur just one day after that the developmental phases are little bit of days like callus development from there plant will develop it will take some time in plant tissue culture but for this protoplast fusion it takes very small amount of time compared with the previous traditional mode of genetic breeding and we are doing this hybrid production in minutes using protoplast fusion so that's the blessing for us right so how do you do that for fusion of the protoplast the first stage is the formation of protoplast or making the protoplast so how could you make the protoplast we have the plant cell remember plant cell has a cell wall and we know the cell wall major cell wall component of the plant cell is cellulose so we treat this plant cell with an enzyme called cellulase now this cellulase enzyme break down the cell wall of the plant so ultimately as it is breaking down the cell wall component of the plant we left with protoplast we form the protoplast so now as we have the protoplast in our hand the second job is a fusion of the protoplast and fusion of protoplast can be brought by two different methods one is the electrofusion i have told you another one is chemical fusion so if it's an electrofusion let's say uh, take a different color here this is one protoplast right with these components and this is a nucleus and say this is another protoplast nucleus components and they will be fused what we do is apply slight electricity there so that they arrange the cell membrane component in such a way just like the electroporation process and then they will be fused with each other those those molecules once they are attached with themselves the molecule of those phospholipids start to rearrange and they will fuse those materials will exchange so after that the structure will look some, something like this at the very beginning just like during the cell division process remember something like that nucleus are there like this then after this we have this giant cell after the fusion in this giant cell what we have we have two different nucleus and those materials surrounded those nucleus will come closer because you remember in this giant cell only one nucleus should be allowed so either they should fuse or not so ultimately those nucleus will also fuse inside the cell so what we have here again at the end is this these components the cytoplasmic components are already being mixed and so as the nuclear components so now we have this giant cell with a giant nucleus now this giant nucleus is termed as hetero carry on okay and this is a giant cell 
fused protoplast cell right so this is the process of fusion now now this process is facilitated here by remember a kind of mistake out there whatever i uh, electroporation electrofusion or chemical fusion any mode of this process okay can happen here and this rest of the stage so once they produce this heterocanyon this mega cell so ultimate remember our ultimate goal is to make all those genetic contents mixed with each other cytoplasmic contents are already been mixed but that's not the actual goal because what we want it is in the next generations also right so we should produce something which is in the genetic level change so ultimately genetic exchange or all these things going on there we transfer this cell to produce what we call the plant callus callus is a undifferentiated mass of cells from where a full plant can grow so that is a totipotent nature of the cell of the plant which can give rise to any different type of cell of plant so a callus which is undifferentiated mass of tissue is formed after that once callus is made then what we produce is called plantlets small plant particles coming out from callus then a fully plants full plant will be produced again why we do all this stuff to go against all this to to make a better variety of plants right so the procedure sometimes also used and also uh, confused with polyploidy type and actually they are not getting confused they are kind of very similar in case of polyploidy also because there also the genetic material exchange things occur so just like that let's say we have this disease i mean this plant which is not very good at production of food but this plant has this production of food property very well if we fuse them ultimately now we get a hybrid plant who produce a very better quality of foods so let's say we have one good quality for this we have another good quality for this now once we fuse them we get both of the qualities in same plant that's why we do this stuff another very important thing is that this whole process of protoplast fusion it's also called as somatic fusion because it's a fusion of somatic cells remember normal somatic cells we just pick up and fuse them and then it can give rise to a whole new plant so that is a huge accomplishment in the field of agriculture right we can do stuffs we can establish wonders in minutes so now in this case this process sometimes some very most another very most important thing about this whole process is that this process of protoplast fusion can overcome the boundary of sexual inability or infertility between the plants so a plant is let's say infertile due to some reason due to some reason of the number of gene segment that are present now we can overcome that incompatibility using this process let's say it it has a odd number of chromosomes there which is not possible for it to produce the offspring there but the thing is here in this case using this process we can turn an aneuploidy to a polyploidy type of plants using this process so that's why it can overcome that infertility for a plant right so that is another very important thing about protoplast fusion now another similar kind of process can also be found in case of animals and animal cell culture and we call it a hybridoma technology remember the process of monoclonal antibody production is based on that hybridoma technology where we have two different cells we make them fuse to produce a giant cell which is called hybridoma so that hybridoma cell can then produce can be used for multiple purposes it can be used for studying cell division it can be used for studying the gene expression it can be studying or uh, it can be used for the production of monoclonal antibody in huge scale right so for so much uses but that's for the animal stuff but majorly when you see protoplast fusion we are talking about plant cells and plant cell fusion and in case of plant tissue culture processes okay so that's it guys that's the way i think this whole process works and i hope this will help you if you like the video hit the like button share this video with your friends in social networks and subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like this thank you